So today we are gonna talk about uh, your pitch again, three minute pitch again. Let's see what you have done since the last time that we talked. And then we will go through your pitch again, I'll make some comments and then we'll talk a little bit about it. Perfect. Great. Ready. Great. Okay, well, first of all, my name is Pablo. I'm co-founder and CEO of Vendi. Vendi is a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace to buy and sell verified products. And I wanted to start with a short story to put you into context on what we do. So as you may have experienced, we have Mark, who's a young professional and he's already bought a new phone. So he has a, an older phone that he doesn't use anymore and, it, and it's waiting there in his drawer. So he thought, why not get some money out of it and sell it? And that's why he recurred to a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace to do so. It's the place where you would get the most out of it. So he goes and lists this in one of these peer-to-peer -peer marketplaces. And then on the other side, on the buyer side, we have Kate who's looking for her next device and she prefers a used device as it's cheaper. And so she goes to a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace because it's the market, it's the place where you can get the best prices for phones instead of going to a regular retailer. The, pro the problem is that between them, they don't know each other, they don't trust each other, and so they don't know if buying between them is actually a good idea, even though there's marketplaces that allow them to connect. The reality is that they fear these risks because it's very common in peer-to-peer -peer marketplaces. About 90% of users that are buying and selling devices in peer-to-peer -peer marketplaces <clears throat> or have been scammed or have been approached by a scammer. And so this staggering number haunts a lot of people from going to these marketplaces. They just prefer going to a retailer and buying their phone or giving their phone there even though they know they're not getting the best value out of it. So ultimately what we do is we tap into this main problem in, in marketplaces and for these reasons We've built Vendi, which is a marketplace to buy and sell verified products. Ultimately, we remove the risks and the hassles from private sales. How do we do that? By building a network that verifies the products before the money is exchanged between the seller and the buyer. And so how does it work? It's very simple. You download an app on iOS or on Android, and as a buyer, you would just go into a listing, add if you want to have 30 day money back, if you want to have insurance on the phone, and then you would buy the phone. Then the money is blocked by Vendi, and the seller gets a notification saying that the phone has been purchased and leaves the phone into the verification network. Once the phone is verified that it actually works, that everything is fine, then the money goes to the seller and the phone goes to the buyer. And then as a seller, how does it work? The same, you use the app, you take only a few pictures and we can automatically list the item for you, which is something that in many marketplaces it doesn't happen, you have to actually write the whole description, etc. So ultimately we're making the experience safer and also easier for buyers and for sellers. In terms of the technology, how Vendi works, uh, we've integrated several partners um, tech, tech plus our own technology. In the first case, you have a payment gateway that you can pay through the app, so you don't have to worry about cash, which can have a lot of issues. Then we've built a network that combines specific software to check the devices automatically. And then finally, we built technology that allows you to sell in a, in a very easy way. So once you take a picture, we can detect the brand, we can detect the color, and as we improve the technology, we'll detect the price, uh, recommended price of sale, of the model, and more characteristics around it to make the selling process easy, but at the same time structured. But the reality is, like us, we're not alone. 
although we do differentiate ourselves in a few aspects in the whole buying and selling journey. So ultimately, you may know the big players like Gumtree let go on the pure peer-to-peer -peer spectrum or shops like Music McPie on the not so peer-to-peer -peer, but still um, buying and selling spectrum. What we do is that we say you can find products at a low risk because we have a verification network at a low price because these prices are governed by the peers. And so ultimately, that's where it makes us fit in a position where it's attractive for both sides of uh, the types of marketplaces that there is, which is one-sided and two-sided. And the exciting part is that the market is actually growing quite fast. The second-hand market is growing on an 18% compound annual growth rate annually. And because of the fact that we're focusing on a market that many users can interact with, uh, the market is very big. Just to put you into perspective, in the UK alone, by only targeting 5% of users, of potential users that could buy and sell advice, we're talking about 300,000 users, which would give us a potential of about 6 million pounds in revenue, considering about 20 pounds per revenue um, per user. If you then add other countries that we would like to tap into, UK, um, sorry, other countries in Europe, US, India, we can reach revenues of one billion pounds in the next years. In terms of where we are, so we launched at the end of last year, by end of November, and since then we've released the app, first in the App Store and then in Google Play in the middle of 2019. And we've been generating gross revenue since then and growing quite well. This month, this past month, actually in July, we activated the transaction fees, which means that we've started to generate revenues from buyers and from sellers, which is the green bar that you can see here. We've also managed to partner with different groups, which combine verification partners of the likes of Apple service providers, of logistics partners, of mobile insurance partners, and we're also closing a deal with a company to offer accessories of phones. And then another company that would scale up the verification partners um, numbers. And so how have we generated this revenue? We charge 3% plus 10 pounds on the buyer and 3% plus 10 pounds on the seller. And then there's also other subsets of revenue that we include like Every time that a user insures the phone, we get revenue. Or if you pay for 30 day money back, we also can get revenue that way. And then in the near future, we have other ways that we want to build more uh, revenue. One of them is offering a pay per month scheme on phones. In terms of the financials, what we expect is to jump into different countries and fundraise during 2020, so this uh, 2019 this year, then 2020, 2022, and 2023. And with that, we have an estimated uh, projection of revenues of about 66 million by 2023, with a target of 33 million app downloads by that time. And that's in terms of transactions, about 2 million transactions that we would like to reach um, by our Series B investment. In terms of our plans, we are right now in the UK and we want to continue expanding around the UK, scaling the model with the funds that we're fundraising right now and then jump into India then jump into Europe and then finally the US. We have other countries in mind like Asian countries like China or Latin America which also fit uh, a very attractive model towards what we're building. And I think we'll end up tackling them. But for now, we planned these countries. And so who's behind all this? Myself, I'm one of the co-founders and Anil. We started together the company. And since then, we've expanded the company team size. And we have in London, 
our head of operations and partnerships, who is Harry, who previously worked in another startup, growing the initial basis of Talent Salad, and then Manny, who has been an architect, Cisco architect for 20 years um, in San Francisco. And so he heads the AI modeling that we're building. And so ultimately, like us, there's other companies that are starting to tap into this whole verification of products because it's a very good incentive for users to build trust very quickly. So we're seeing that there's appetite in the US, there's appetite in Europe around other kinds of products. And so it's a natural evolution that in the future, phones and other products are going to continue that line. So we think it's a very good opportunity right now to build this. And so in order to continue growing, we're looking for funds, mainly for brand expansion, product development, and then increasing the team size to support the growth. So that's it. So if you're interested in investing, if you're interested in marketplaces, or if you would know of anybody that would like what we're building, please get in touch. Thank you. Good. How did you like it? A bit longer than three minutes. <laughs> before, before I Sorry? talk, how, how did you like this presentation now? So I think that the story makes more sense according to the changes that you told me, so that's good. But um, I think I probably did much more than three minutes if it was... <laughs> yes. <laughs> A little bit more. But, uh... <laughs> But let's not. Oh, yeah, go. I think it, it, it's more more natural the, the whole story. Exactly. Let's go back to the slides. The front page, the first page, I liked because you have the brand, you have a picture, and you have a statement that represents what you do and what's the value that you are bringing to the market. You mentioned that. So it was easy to fast understand what to do. So it's good. And then you start with a story, which is great. Very good. I liked the way that you presented. You present Mark that he has some problems. You present Kate that she has some problems as well. Um, but before going to the next slide, I think there, there would be an improvement opportunity here when you talk about Mark and Kate. Mm -hmm. You mentioned their problems in selling cell phones or buying cell phones, but you didn't mention too much their experience on solving their problem today. What mm -hmm. you could include here is what probably Mark would do in order to have his cell phone sold. Probably yeah. he would enter in a website and trying to take pictures of her of his cell phone and then include in a marketplace with his generic so people are afraid of it, the pictures are not good. Uh, they need uh, he needs to include all characteristics because it's not easy for him to uh, to have a description so you could talk about the problems that your platform will solve yeah there's space here for you to enter in the characteristics of your problem without e entering in the characteristics of your product but you know what I mean? Because yeah. you talk about yeah. it, but you don't talk that this is, you don't say that this is your product characteristics. But then in the next slide, you mention. And the same thing with Kate. Kate, she wants to buy a cell phone, but what does she do today? Mm -hmm. How? How? And then when you present those uh, options for them, you could present the competition. Maybe it's a good thing here to present the competition 
uh, when you are presenting what they could do and then how how would this uh, works you talk about Mark's story and then you talk about Kate's story you mention the problems that they have with the characteristics of what they do now and these characteristics are based on the, compet the competitors that you have because it's what they use now so mm. when you mention that they are facing these difficulties you could mention that uh, the companies that are there in the market they are in the left side of the graph in the upper side upper left or in the bottom right but there's nobody in the bottom left yeah and then what you could do is bring the gra the competition graph without your brand and you just mentioned that those are the options that Mark and Kate has have today but now they need and, <clears throat> sorry in, in that sense you recommend three slides so one mark one kate one what both options they have or one like this and then another one with like the problem and then the graph i i i wouldn't use the problem slide the slide number three I think you don't need to use it. Mm -hmm. When you are talking about the story of Mark and Kate, you can mention the problems that they have. And you can also mention that they are not alone in the market. 90% of the people that are there, uh, they have problem with scammers. So it's also a problem of Mark and Kate. You know, you mention all those aspects on slide number three when you are telling the story of Mark and Kate. Yeah. It's... Yeah, so basically transform these two into, into the, um, the solutions that they have today, the problems that they're facing using them, etc. Okay. Exactly. And then even remove yes you can move to this one without presenting vendi mar vendi brand just present the other brands and then when you are about to conclude the slide you say so they need one solution that make it easier that make it cheaper for jane and the best value that Mark could sell to. And it's exactly what vending is proposing. And then vending brand appears here. So we are going to provide to the market a easy solution with the best value for both of the, the personas. And how is how the solution works, and then you talk about the solution. Yeah. But we still we 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 can still make the slide number four now, which is the competitor, a little bit better because here you work only with two variables, which is the risk and the price. But I think mm -hmm. there are other characteristics that you could include. But uh, we can talk about it in the mentoring program. Okay. Um, so, slide number five. You mentioned about the product, the solution, how it works, which is good. In how it works, it's very simple. You could you could make it more visual in the sense of how it really works for Mark and Jane. What they need to do. 
visually. You explain, which was very good, but you could do it more visually. Yeah. So, I mean, here, because I had my my dilemma, right? Uh, without making it too long, Yeah. reality is there's one flow for a buyer, there's one flow for a seller. But if I divide both here by buyer's seller flow, then the images go too small. So is it worth doing two slides here? Maybe. Like one for buyer, one for seller? Maybe. I'm not sure, but maybe it's possible. We need to see how it will look like when we are looking at the slide we need to test but it's a possibility because the number of slides not necessarily uh, are fixed so you don't need 10 slides you don't need one slide to present the competition you don't need one slide to present the problem and the personas you can use more it depends on the flow of the presentation and how the pictures will appear to help you telling the story. So I wouldn't stick with the number of slides. Let's try to make it more effective and easier to understand and to explain. Okay. So next yeah. slide, slide, num slide number seven. You present the technology, which was good, and it's one of the best differentiation that you have, the cell part, but it's very small. It's hard to read, so you need to make it bigger. You know that you have a lot of blue space on your slide. You could use it. Yeah, no? Yeah. Exactly, make yeah. it bigger. And there are a lot of text on your slides in general. In most of them, there are texts that are small. So it's one thing that we need to work on too. Because you need to make it easier to read and just to be clear that uh, your point will be represented there. But you, ju you don't need to write a big text. Maybe just bullet points would work better. So in this case, for example, if I put less text, I basically don't put anything. Let me see. We need to think. There is a way where you could use text, but not much. The text on secure API integration with <clears throat> Mango Play, it's good. This amount of text is good. You just need to make it bigger to be easier to understand. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then try to do the same thing with the middle part. Maybe break in two lines, you know? Something like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's easier to understand, to read, and we can follow you easier. Mm -hmm. Good. Let's go to the next slide. Yeah. Now we have a clear view of the market growth in terms of uh, billions dollars. No, not dollars, right? It's uh, ah, it's dollars, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we have growth in billion dollars, and then you bring the number of users. Yeah. And I really like that you presented this the six million pounds as a, rev a, pos a potential revenue but it's lost on this slide because when you mentioned I didn't find this number it, mm. it is in the title and it should be somewhere else for being easier to correlate 300k 
with six million. Yeah. If you include in the title, it's not clear. And I I wasn't uh -huh. able to identify where this number was. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, but the letters are small. Let's make it bigger. Yeah. And an another thing on this slide is that you are mentioning UK market. But in the left side of the slides, you present the global market, right? Yeah. So it's, it's they are not talking to each other. What you could do okay, what? is what you could do is you can use this way, but we need to think in a way of saying that. Uh, this let me see 30 billion dollars in 2020 is global however the uk market is part of the 30 billion and then when you talk about the uk market then you correlate with part of the 30 billion and then you will create connection with things Mm -hmm. so you need always to remember that you are telling a story and the whole yeah. story they need to be connected from one slide to other from one topic in the same slide to other everything has to be connected okay so let's yeah. go to the next slide but then in the mentoring sections we will go back to this one to go into more details we can approach how you could transform the 30 billion in uh, x billion or x million in uk and how you're gonna make this transition then mm -hmm. you talk about the traction which is good now, but it's still small. If there are a lot of blue in the slides that you are not using, so we need to use it more. You need to try to use the whole slide. So you mean what, like this area here? Yes, exactly. This area on the top, the area on the bottom. So, would you put any margins? Because, like, the, the reason is just to have some margins around it. Yeah, it doesn't need to be... It doesn't need to have. But we need to think better. Because uh, the way that you are bringing the titles of the slides, it make it it requires margins but there's another way to do that that wouldn't require margin and in this way you could you could gain space on your slides but we can we can think together later on when okay. you talk when you talk about tra traction it's good because you present where you are right now and where you're going to be Um, for me, it's hard to identify how the partners will help you or is helping you in the traction part. Because when you present partners in the traction slide, I would expect them to help you sell your products. But it's not exactly the case. They are more like operational partners or in the case yeah. of the insurance, yes, they can help on you on sale, on sales. But I believe that those sales related to insurance are not included in the graph on the left, is it? Well, 
This revenue uh, includes any kind of revenue, which is also from the insurance. Oh, but okay. we've had of insurance use very little, so it's almost almost as as if none. Okay. Uh, there is a better way to present this one. I probably we will need to separate partners, the partners that helps you operationally, and the partners that will help you in selling more. Because they will they will be related on the on the left side of the slide, which will be the the numbers. Yeah. Uh, you need to correlate them somehow. Well, I mean, re reality is only the only real operational is this one because we don't win any money with them. With these, we win money because, well, yeah, we don't win money that we actually pay them. So yeah, I guess these two are the operational. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, makes sense. Okay. Go. Let's go to the next one. Business model. It's a bit of a boring slide, this one. Yeah. We need to... The information that it contains are relevant. I like it. But we need to present it in a better way. Go to the next one. Yeah. I think the order here, uh, we could move. We could change the orders. Maybe it will be easier for us to present business model before. Why? Because if you go to the market size slide, you are going to say that you will have 300k cell phones Users. sold. Yeah. And in order to reach 6 million in revenue, you need to multiply 300k by 20, right? Mm -hmm. Why 20? It's the revenue per user generated. Okay, but why? Why the revenue generated per user is 20? Based on an average of what each pays, so the user, the, the buyer pays and the seller pays a transaction fee and then insurance and so if you divide it by the number of users estimated to reach that number, it's about 20. Yeah, you need to present user. this number right after the market figures because here you need to make clear that you are multiplying 300k by 20 and then you can reach a potential 6 million in revenue. But how are you gonna get this yeah. 20? Next slide. So how are you gonna make 20 per user? Oh, the user will sell their cell phone by... Uh, what's the average price for a cell phone that you you believe it you have on your platform? 500? Sorry? Uh, 500? 500? So you have 500, in a 500 cell phone that's sold on your platform, you have, you will have 20 bucks plus 3% of 500, which is 15 from buyer and 15 from seller. Yeah. But then you have 50, not 20. And we are not considering here phone insured and transaction for 30 day money back. If you consider yeah. those two in each transaction, which is not is not feasible. I I would I wouldn't consider in all transactions, but let's say that you consider just for the example, you have 
$63 dollars per sale and you are considering only 20 why? so the reason is because this average value is from the current uh, past 8 months but on the, on the business model which is where we get this number on the business model we put an estimated average of 300 okay uh, so it was actually smaller because of that and okay. that one also included uh, insurance it included 30 day money back okay great so you need it need to be clear you know you didn't mention yeah. that to me so the story remember the flow of the story is break now it's broken yeah okay so let's go to the next slide Okay, financials, we need to take a look in a, in a higher level of details in this one. There are a lot of numbers here. We need to take a look on, on it and then try to present it in an easier way to see because it's hard. Let's go to the next one. Roadmap also hard to see but it's good, it's good that you included next one your team good, I like the pictures but still hard to read 14. too much text let's go to 14 Here you present uh, relevant information. Okay, still hard to read. Let's go to the next one. Then we can we can talk about this one in the mentoring sections because uh, it's important to present. But we need to we need to include this slide in the correct order to make it powerful because it's important and here we have your round funds but you didn't me mention the the valuation right yeah yeah we need to think about it also because of the percentage of your company that you are gonna offer for them it's important and then so, and that, in that one I mean I, I've heard that it's <clears throat> sometimes not not good to put it because it depends a bit on like what the next steps of the negotiation goes so like here they would see and they would say okay it's a it's an okay round let's have a next chat and then in that next chat you would tell them instead of like giving them already a reason to say no I see what you mean but there's another point here I understood the reasons behind of not presenting but uh, also if, if you are not presenting it seems that you don't have uh, an accurate number on your mind and it might seem that you don't know exactly your potential or you don't know exactly where you're gonna be in the future so there are some points that are good there are some points that are bad let's let's and it, it also depends on the meeting that you're gonna have so for now it's okay to not present but then in the mentoring sections we will talk more about it because mm -hmm. depending on the meeting that you're gonna have uh, you need to present so it, it, yeah. it depends a little bit but you need to have this number anyway and then you need to, you will decide if you include or not but you need to have this number and then you conclude asking for if you are interested in investing and vending please get in touch yeah, we could improve it a little bit more also. 
uh, in order to make the investor take action. We, we work on this as well. So total will have 16 slides. You have 3 minutes to present a 3 minute pitch. If you have 15 slides, you have 5 slides per minute. If you have 5 slides per minute, you have 12 seconds per slide to present. Mm -hmm. Just to... It's not a problem, but just to have in mind uh, how long would it take for you to present the whole thing. And we will also work on reduce the number of minutes that you take to present and you have a more assertive presentation to talk only the most important top topics in in a flow that's easier to understand that you wouldn't lose time talking about things that are not the most relevant thing to talk yeah. uh, but in general the presentation improved a lot i really like it i think that you feel that it was improved as well and uh, if we work on the parts that are missing we review we adjust we practice we'll be able to get you to the presentation where you're gonna receive the investment and uh, you are on your way we are on your way yep <laughs> so did you did you see the difference between your first presentation this one and how it could be going forward how better you could do yeah well, i think as we've discussed but the reality is putting everything into a story instead of a checklist makes it much yeah. easier to understand and then to follow and then for anybody to just say okay i'm i'm in or i'm not in so yeah makes makes a lot of sense great great so those those were the points that we we discussed today about your pitch there are other aspects that uh, we need to talk in more details in each part of it but i'm happy but i'm happy that you liked all the points that i have mentioned already and we can go through more details okay okay perfect so great okay to well talk again to you. thank you very much for all the good feedback very useful and uh, we'll keep in touch okay yeah sure perfect thank you gusto thank you bye bye, bye, -bye.